In this video, we are going to learn regarding cell references. Cell references is further broken down into relative, absolute and mixed reference. Before we get started, let's understand the core basics. Every cell in Excel has to have an address and there is no exception to this. The cell address is the intersection point of the column name and the row number. For example, I becomes the column name, 12 is the row number, the intersection point of I and 12 is the cell address. You can also see the cell address in the name box. The name box is situated in the top left corner. Now, the problem statement is that I have different products. I have the traffic month and I have the amount rupees. Now, I want to calculate 5%, 10% and 15% on the amount rupees. Now, if I simply go equal to, I can select this particular cell and I can multiply it by 5%. I will get the correct answer. I can also go ahead and I can multiply it by 0 0.05. That is again 5%. And once again, I can also come here. I can write 5 divided by 100. However, this becomes incorrect if anybody comes to the cell and changes 5% and makes it 12%. Now, the cell where the calculation was made does not change. There you go. Why doesn't it change? Because this cell has no reference of 12%. So what is the best solution? The best solution is that the calculation should refer to G6 as well as H5. 12% currently is appearing in the cell H5. So then rather writing 5%, I should simply refer to the cell. Now, for that, I simply modify the formula. And now my formula reads is equal to G6 into H5. There you go. Just to cross check, I'll simply make it 10%. There you go. That's 10% of 45,632. We get the right answer. Now, what we need to further understand is that we have only got the solution for the first cell. An important note, never make a conclusion in Excel on the basis of the first cell. Never. If you ever want to make a conclusion, always make a conclusion at the bottom of the screen but never at the top cell. Yes, it does act as a reference that the formula which you have written, is it giving you the correct answer? But you will not leave your screen. Whatever answer you're getting is correct. You wouldn't do that. So now the next step is that we should be getting the same formula to appear for all the remaining cells and they should all be multiplied by 10%. Currently, the cell reads G6 into H5. Now, if I want the formula to appear vertically down, there are many solutions. I could drag, I could use a copy paste, I could uh, use a control D or else I could use a double click. Now, there could be a probability that you may know some other methods also. Definitely yes, but currently these are the different methods which I could point out. to. You could pick up any one of them. I will use the simplest, which is basically drag. Now, coming back over here, the moment I drag this cell vertically down, I want you to first understand what will happen to the cell address. For example, if when I drag the cell vertically down, G6 will directly move into G7, further to G8, G9, G10, finally it will move to G14. And that's exactly what we want. But the problem happens to H5. H5 will also move vertically down and point to H6 and so on, which is not the correct answer. Look at this. When you get a hash, that doesn't mean that there's an error. That means the number is so large, it doesn't fit in the width which is being specified. So I increase the width. There you go. This number is definitely huge. There you go. Now, this is termed as a logical error. Now, what's a logical error in Excel? A logical error in Excel is an error which will give you the answer, but the answer is incorrect. And then you have a syntax error. 
which means it gives you an error on screen. So for example, is equal to nine divided by zero is a syntax error. But what you see over here, this is a logical error. You are getting an answer, but the answer is incorrect. So exactly what is happening over here? As we, as we saw previously, G6 moved into G7 and G8. So this is perfect because you're, when you're in the eighth row, you wanted to point to G8. Subsequently, you do not want the row number to change. Now, what's the solution for this? So just a quick recap. Every cell has to have an address, which is the intersection point of the column name and the row number. Now, the column name and the row number are completely different entities. Very important. We need to understand that the column name and the row number are completely chalk and cheese. They are completely different. But when they come together, they make up the cell. So that's what we say, that when they intersect, they point to a single specific cell. Now, over here, I have given you a reference of J9. So I have the column name J. I have the row number 9. And that's the intersection point, which is J9. So I have simply taken the screenshot of the name box. Further on, we say that when we calculate the formula vertically, the row number changes. Now, you can go in two directions. Either you can go vertical or you can go horizontal. When you go vertical, the row number changes. But when you go horizontal, the column name changes. For reference purposes, I will use the word drag, which means I will say that when I drag a cell vertically down, the row number changes. So from row number 8, it moves to row number 9. From row number 9, it moves to row number 10. That is when I go vertical. If I go horizontal, the column name changes. So for reference, if I was in the I column, then subsequently I will move to the J column. Subsequently, I will move to the K column. Now, the important point is that if you do you really want it to change? If the answer is yes, do nothing. Now, in our case, let's first take the example of G5, G6 in this matter. I wanted G6. So am I going to drag? The answer is yes. How am I going to drag vertically down? So G6 will move into G7, will move into G8. And I want it to move down. But the problem is with respect to H5. I do not want H5 to move down. And that's exactly what I'm trying to mention over here. That when we calculate a formula vertically, the row number changes. And when we calculate the formula horizontally, the column name changes. Do you really want it to change? If the answer is yes, then do then don't do anything. And that exactly happened for us with reference to the G column. But the conversation changes if you don't want the row number to change. Then you need to apply the break. And for me, the break is basically the dollar sign. How do we use the dollar sign? I will explain it to you. So the reference which I have made is I call copy paste, dragging of formula, or let's say we have double click or we have control D. There are all different ways where we can get the formula moving in different cells. So I relate these as an accelerator. And if there is an accelerator, there has to be a break. So when I go vertical, the row number changes. When I go horizontal, the column name changes. If I don't want it to change, I need to freeze the cell by using the dollar sign. Now, how do we use the dollar sign? The rule is very simple. If I tell you that I want to write the number 5 and this number 5 should be negative 5, where will the minus sign appear? Will it appear before the number 5 or will it appear after the number 5? I'm sure you have guessed it right. It will appear before the number 5. The same way, if I want to freeze either the column name or the row number, the dollar sign has to precede it. So for example, if I have a dollar sign over here, which may look very close to J as well as it may look close to the number nine, but this dollar belongs to who? This dollar belongs to the row number nine. The same way, if I have a dollar sign appearing before J, now you may feel it is appearing before J as well as it is appearing, appearing before the number nine, but apparently it is not for nine. If this dollar sign is only for J, because 9 is completely different. Remember the rule is 
that the column name and the row number are completely different. Completely different. If this conversation is clear, then the dollar sign conversation gets better. Now, let's take another example. Let's say in this case, I write a dollar sign over here. Pause the video and think about it. That this dollar sign belongs to, does it belong to the column name? Does it belong to the row number? Who does this dollar sign belong to? I assume you have an opinion at the moment. This dollar sign doesn't belong to anybody. Because remember, according to the rule of the game, the dollar sign has to precede whoever it wants to freeze. So, I move up. I go back into the reference. That's the formula. So, I need to freeze the column name and the row number. Currently, my cursor is at H5. If I simply take my mouse and I move to the left, now my cursor is at G6. Now, once again, I come back to H5. The shortcut to apply the dollar sign is the F4 button. But in many computers, specifically laptops, if you press the F4 button, you don't get the dollar sign. In fact, it may mute the microphone or it may uh, maybe increase or decrease the brightness of the laptop. So the output may differ. In that case, you will press the function and then the F4 button. But first, you will try with the F4 button. So in my case, I first press the F4 button. I get a dollar sign for the column name and I get a dollar sign for the row number. Now, once again, I press the F4 button. This time, the dollar sign only appears for the row number 5. Once again, I press the dollar sign. Now, the dollar sign is for the column name. Once again, I press the dollar sign and now there is no dollar on the screen. Remember, the rule is very simple that the dollar has to precede whatever it has to freeze. If it has to freeze the column name, the dollar has to freeze the column name. If it wants to freeze the row number, then the dollar has to free the dollar has to appear before the row number. In my case, I want to freeze both. I want to freeze the column name and the row number. Now I press enter. Now I will click and I will double click. There you go. And I told you previously that we will always make a conclusion at the bottom of the screen. Never at the top, always at the bottom. So coming back over here, I will simply do a double click. Let me check for the reference. So over here, I have 32,311. Perfect. And 10% does not move from here. Perfect. Which means the calculations which I have on the screen, they are perfect.